And when it showed at Sundance, people were floored by it, floored by it. Your executive producer, one of them, Abigail Disney, I know sent you an email saying it's freaking brilliant, freaking brilliant. And that was before the left wing started to freak out and say, not freaking brilliant. Um, this is about, quote, white savior tendencies, yours, I guess, um, saying that it's Islamophobic, that it pushes American propaganda, and that they, this is Abigail Disney's description of the backlash. I failed, failed, and absolutely failed to understand just how exhausted by and disgusted with the perpetual representation of Muslim men and women as terrorists or former terrorists or potential terrorists, the Muslim people are. That was a failure of empathy and respect on my part, and therefore the gravest of failures. So in no way does this film suggest all Muslim people are terrorists or potential terrorists. <laughs> it takes a look at one group that was accused of being terrorists that was at Gitmo and talks about the rehab center and the way forward. That's what this film does. Um, were you stunned by how this Islamophobic narrative started to take over as soon as the film hit? Yes and no. And what I mean by that is, so you have to understand that the attacks on the film didn't start at at the actual festival um, when people, after people saw the film, they the attacks on the film started before anyone had seen it. And so, for example, the announcement went on, um, I think it's December 9th of last year, and the film didn't play until like six weeks, almost two months later, I think it was January 22nd. And so in that time, you know, <sighs> The, the amount of um, vitriol and anger that was directed at this film that no one had seen and no one had met me, um, it, it was really, really shocking because we'd done so many screenings before Sundance and we, with the Muslim community, with with we had guards at Guantanamo, we had MAGA people, we had uh, really liberal people. We really did a lot of test screenings because we knew that this was such an important topic to get right, but also that the film was going to be probably attacked, but we thought from the alt-right. And um, so we're preparing for that. But when the attacks initially came, I actually understood it at first because no one had seen the film and they saw that there was this, you know, non-Muslim white woman who made a film about terrorism. And they thought probably that it was like every other film about terrorism. That is very sensationalistic. That is very fear mongering. That does reinforce negative stereotypes. And I think that they, because they hadn't seen it, they assumed that this was the, the the case. And so those initial, you know, accusations of the film were from a place that I actually understood. Because what you have to realize is when when someone has that much hate and that much anger and vitriol uh, for a piece of work as a film that they've never seen or a person like me that they've never met, one thing that I learned in the fire service is, so for example, I went on a call once and this kid had really seriously injured his his hand and we showed up and the mom was crying and the kid was bleeding out, but the father was irately mad. And we show up and he starts yelling at us like, how, like, why, where the fuck have you been? You're so fucking incompetent. I'm like, whoa, dude. And, and he was just really hammering into this the entire time we were trying to help this kid. We finally got the kid patched up and uh, we put him in the ambulance. And when they were out of earshot, one of the firefighters said, you know, that guy's fucking lucky I didn't deck him. And then my captain, because he was an older and wiser man than we were, turned around and had this, this is about to be a teachable moment, look on his face. And he said, listen, you have to understand in this job, you're exposed to people who are going through the worst traumatic moment of their lives. And even though this man was angry at you and he was yelling at you and he was furious at you, it wasn't about you. And what he said is like, everyone processes trauma differently. Everyone, um, you know, some people cry, some people laugh, and some people get angry. And this yeah. man was angry, and it. that's how he was processing trauma. And so, what I to what your I'm, point, what let, I mean let, by that, yeah, in, what I, what I, to, to your point, up. I just want to tell the audience that more than 200, 230 filmmakers signed a letter denouncing the documentary. A majority had not seen it. So, I mean, that's the point you're making. Yeah, they, and, they I, were, and I think they denounced that, like, it without the reason why there was so much vitriol is I will say for this, like. You know, when a person I consider my sister is Muslim, and she's told me over the years about her experience in the in the United States being a Muslim woman who wears the hijab and having that experience over the last twenty years is a type of trauma. And so when these people lashed out at me, at first I was actually quite I understood it because I was like, oh, like if you're a Muslim in this country and have experienced this kind of bigotry for the last twenty years, and then you see a film about terrorism at Sundance, it's supposed to be this progressive liberal place, you assume it's like all the other films about terrorism. Of course that makes sense that 
people would lash out at this film having not but seen it. But they stayed it. mad even after they saw it. Yeah, it well, it's not like again, they saw I, it and said we, we they changed did see it, but they were. That's what I, I will, I will, I will say. That's what I originally thought. I changed my mind later when I found out more information. Um, but what I, what I wanted to say because I know we don't have that much time left is two things. <laughs> um, one is that the reason we're talking right now and the reason why people in the states are even you know aware of this film um, are just other than the New York Times article is because there's a, been a group that um, has helped, they they helped me um, make a screening in the United States and they paid for me to screen the film in LA. And from that screening, a lot of words spread about the film and what it was and what it wasn't. And that was a group called Fair for All. And um, I think it, you're familiar with them. I'm I just want to give them a shout board. out because I have done two interviews Fair's now and awesome. I keep on forgetting to yeah. do it. No, no, no. Fair is awesome. And, and they stood up for you. But yeah. what's been so disheartening is how even after people have seen this, now they're accusing you. I mean, the woman who ran Sundance, she came up with all sorts of roadblocks for you saying, I need to see the consent forms from the detainees. I need to see your your plan to protect them. Now they've come out and said that two of the four um, f- men featured were not aware that the film yeah, there, was being released there's been a lot publicly. Of false, um, there's been a lot of That's false true. misleading information put out um, into uh, the world, especially from uh, a one this one group called Cage, and you could Google them and see who they are. It's like um, it's like Care, only with former no no. no. So ca- like C- Cage is a is a group in the United in the UK, um, and how it was described to me is that it's a a group of former Guantanamo detainees and uh, it's an activist group. And um, I didn't know who Cage was. And so how they were described to me when I met, uh, when I talked with people who knew about them, they said this group attacks any, like they're trying to push a narrative that everyone in Guantanamo was innocent and never did anything wrong. And yeah, no one was charged, but there were people in not Guantanamo who did do stuff. And obviously you can see that in my film. Yeah. Um, yeah. But like they will attack any book or any film that challenges that. Yeah, narrative. so it's no surprise that they're mad. They'll, yeah, they'll do a misinformation But what about what about the specific kind of allegation, stuff. Meg? That is it true for just for the record that two of the four were not aware the film was being no. released publicly, and they said one no. said they all one, they, they claim no. one told you he didn't want to be featured in the film no. at all. That's what that's the allegation. No, no one ever told me they they wanted me to take them out of the film. We had one guy stop filming with us, and that was Abu Ghanim in the film. And basically, I he was the most of all the four guys. He was the one that was most eager to join the project because he wanted to send a message. Like his whole, when he talks in the film, the whole reason he did the film is because he wanted to let people know what happened to him in Guantanamo, how horrible the American government was to them and how hypocritical they were. And once he finished delivering that message, he didn't want to talk about anything else. And so all these other questions I kept on asking him, he's like, I don't want to talk about that. And then, and then he's like, all mm-hmm. right, I've said what I need mm-hmm. to say. I'm done. And he left the project. But he yeah, never like, was just like, well, well me why exactly were they so terrible to you? Let's, what, <laughs> what got them so angry? Let's, let's but, go back to that. But I, but, I, but I wanted to say that like, you know, this film, I think the, what I will say about all the accusations being thrown at this film the best weapon against those accusations is just to watch the fucking film. The best the defense is the film itself because when you see it, you realize that 99% of these accusations are not true. If you're like me, you're growing more and more concerned about the future. The market's all over the place. Inflation is at its highest level in 40 years. Interest rates are skyrocketing. Market experts are predicting and already in some cases using the term recession, but also terms like economic hurricane and unprecedented If you want to protect your future, call a precious metal dealer I trust, American Hartford Gold. They can show you how to protect your savings and retirement accounts by diversifying your portfolio with physical gold and silver. All it takes to get started is a short phone call, and they will have physical gold and silver delivered right to your door or inside your IRA or 401k. And they keep it simple. They're the highest rated firm in the country with an A-plus rating from the Better Business Bureau and thousands of satisfied clients. And as an exclusive offer for my fans, if you call them right now, they'll give you up to $1,500 of free silver and a free safe on qualifying orders. So don't wait. Call now. It's 866-518-2955. Call 866-518-2955 or just text my name, Megan, to 65532. Again, call 866-518-2955 or text M-E-G-Y-N to 65532. Hey, thanks so much for watching. If you like what you just saw, hit the subscribe button for more clips and full episodes.